So we're interested in calculating the CPI. You've learned the four steps that allow us to get to uh, the number of the price index, which is the CPI. Uh, the first thing we want is we uh, need to fix the basket. And in this example, we are given the basket, which contains four books and 10 pencils. So this is to say that on average, uh, an American consumes four books and 10 pencils, right? And when we're thinking about macroeconomics, we would obviously be thinking about many, many more consumers. But right now, let, let's roll with these numbers. So let's take a look at the table. In our second step, we know that we collect the prices of uh, goods and services that are in our basket. Here, we only have goods, books, and pencils. So the first column is telling you here, the year 2018, 19, and 2020, uh, in which those prices were collected by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In the second column, you have the price of books, which was $10 on average in 2018, which is also given to us as the base year, uh, $11 in 2019 and $12 in 2020. Similarly, we're given in column three, the price of pencils, which is $2, $2.50, and $3, respectively, for those years. Now, you're asked to compute in the third step the cost of the basket, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to compute the cost of the basket in each year. So you're going to get three values here, and this is a good time to pause the video before you see the answer. So when we want to compute the cost of the basket, what you're doing here is, let's make a column here and say, well, the cost of the basket in 2018 is going to be four books, which is in our basket, times the price, which is $10, plus plus 10 pencils times the price of the pencil, which is equal to $60. So we can say now that in the base year, which is 2018, the cost of the basket is $60. Next, we turn to 2019. You're going to do the same thing. Four books times $11 plus Ten pencils times two dollars fifty cents, and this equals sixty nine dollars. Again, in the last year, four times twelve dollars plus ten times three dollars. Notice that the cost of the basket is always going to be measured in dollars, and this is seventy eight dollars. Okay, so. Um, this was our third step, right? This was step number one. This was step number two, two, right? And third was cost of the basket. The fourth step is going to be um, computing the CPI in each year. So let's take a look at the CPI in 2018. The CPI in 2018 will be the cost of the basket in 2018 divided by the cost of the basket in the base year, which is also 2018. That's what's given to us times 100. So notice the numerator and denominator will cancel out and you're going to be left with a value of 100, which tells us that the CPI is always 100 in the base year. Let's calculate uh, CPI in 2019. 
You're going to take the cost of the basket in 2019 divided by the cost of the basket in the base year, which is 2018, times 100, which is equal to $69 divided by $60 times 100. Notice the dollar signs cancel and you're left with a number which is 115. Last but not the least, we calculate CPI in 2020, which is the cost of the basket in 2020 divided by the cost of the basket in 2018 times 100. Again, 2018 is our base year. This is 78 divided by $60 times 100, which is equal to 130. So notice we have three numbers. We have CPI in the base year, which is 100, CPI in 2019, which is 115, and CPI in 2020, which is 130. So we've calculated CPI, or the average level of prices of, for consumers in all the years that were given to us. The next thing we wanna do is calculate CPI inflation. CPI inflation. And so I would like you to calculate what is CPI inflation between 2018 and 19. What is that equal to? Between 2019 and 20. And what is that equal to? And also 2018 and 2020. Does that equal to? Okay, so let's think about CPI inflation in 2018 between 2018 and 19. How are we going to do this? We are going to take CPI in the new year, which is 19, CPI in 2019 minus CPI in 2018, which is the old year, divided by the CPI in 2018 times 100 percent. We don't want to forget this percent. And that equals, let's go back to those numbers, 115 minus 100, 115 minus 100 divided by 100 times 100 percent. You could have already seen this because the base is 100. This is a 15 percent jump in the level of prices. So we can say that inflation, the inflation rate between 2018 and 19 is 15%. Similarly, you can calculate the, the inflation rate between 2019 and 2020, which is 130 minus 115 divided by 115 times 100%, which equals 13%. And lastly, the inflation rate between 2018 and 20, 2020 would be 130 minus 100 divided by 100 times 100%, which is equal to 30%. Okay, so we have our answers.